Now the reason dipole moments are introduced in this chapter is because in talking about dielectrics, you remember I drew, I was trying to explain to you what a dielectric is doing. Then I remember I drew something like this. Remember that? I said we put a water molecule there or we put some kind of material and uh, the capacitor makes the molecules in the dielectric align themselves so that the dielectric, so that if the, if the electric field of the capacitor is that way, the positive moves that way in the direction of the electric field, the negative moves opposite the direction of the electric field, so the dipole moment, the, the molecule aligns itself. Now the molecule is going to create its own little electric field. In which direction? This way, right? So as I was talking about that, uh, I said, OK, so the electric field of the original capacitor is going to decrease by some factor. And so that's why the dielectric causes the capacitance to increase, OK? So that's why in this chapter, they talk about dipole moments because it fits in with what a dielectric is to the, in the very definition of a dielectric. So here's what a dipole moment is. The dipole moment is simply any charge distribution where you have a negative charge and a positive charge of equal and opposite magnitude that are bound to each other. They're not free to move in any direction that they want. These, these two molecules, these two particles are bound together. And the distance between uh, them is, you can call it D. Okay? And if you place that dipole moment inside of some external electric field, what's going to happen to those? to those two charges. Well, just like the, that dielectric situation, they're going to align themselves so that the positive is opposite to the elect external electric field, and the negative is, goes towards the opposite of the electric field, right? So this thing will rotate. Here's what happens. This external electric field causes a force on this. This electric field causes a force on this the opposite way, right? And therefore, the molecule rotates this way, like that. So that the final situation ends up like this. You see? That's the situation it would like to be in. How about if the molecule started this way? Let's say it started this way. The electric field would push this out, right? This would be the force. And then the negative would be feeling a force this way. So what would happen to it? It would again turn that way clockwise. It would again turn that way until it's lined up like that. You see? So it always wants to be this way. The positive wants to be away from the electric field. So this time it's going to th turn through a greater angle. OK? Now what really will happen is by the time it goes to that position, it has a certain velocity, right? So it's not going to stop there. So it's going to go like this. It's going to pass it. And then it's going to go to the same position that it began with. So for example, this one, it's going to go like this. By the time it gets here, it's going to have a certain velocity. Then it's going to go until. It's going to go until, let's say, the original angle was 40 degrees, right? It turns until the angle 
is 40 degrees below the x-axis, and it stops there. The electric field would push this out, right? This would be the force. And then the negative would be feeling a force this way. So what would happen to it? It would again turn that way clockwise. It would again turn that way until it's lined up like that. You see? So it always wants to be this way. The positive wants to be away from the electric field. So this time it's going to thir turn through a greater angle. Okay? Now what really will happen is by the time it goes to that position, it has a certain velocity, right? So it's not going to stop there. So it's going to go like this. It's going to pass it. And then it's going to go to the same position that it began with. So for example, this one, it's going to go like this. By the time it gets here, it's going to have a certain velocity. Then it's going to go until It's going to go until, let's say, the original angle was 40 degrees, right? It turns until the angle is 40 degrees below the x-axis, and it stops there. So it goes, psh, and then it goes like that, back, and then back and forth, back and forth. By the way, this is how your food is cooked when you put it in the microwave, OK? Put your food in the, the, the microwave. How is it working? Well, it's sending out electric fields in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum, right? And the particles in the food that you have, right, they're turning back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, agitating, OK? That's how the food warms. How else does it warm, right? So um, that's what happens. Now this one warms through, uh, turns through a greater angle. So it turns through, let's say the original angle was 140, right? So by the time it gets here, it's going to have a faster velocity than this guy. So V final. So V final 2 is greater than V final 1, right? Because it turned through a greater angle. And then what's going to happen, it's going to overshoot it, and then it's going to end up hundred and forty degrees below the x-axis. And then again, it's going to rotate like that, you see? So Let's do the, the formal equations for this is like this. The dipole moment P is defined as the distance D times the, uh, the charge uh, times the charge of the either one. Okay? Uh, the way we can the way that they write it is like this, times our hat vector where the r hat vector is uh, pointing from the negative q to the q, like this, r hat. In other words, the dipole moment vector points from the negative charge to the plus charge. So in this case, the dipole moment vector would be this thing here. This is the dipole moment vector. The r hat is a unit vector from the negative to the positive, and then the distance is d, the uh, q. Now, sometimes they write it this way. In the, the book, you'll see like this. 2aq r hat. That's the way our book writes it. The a is the distance from the negative q to the centers. 